Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to the seventh webinar in the Cardiovascular Connections 2022 series. Today's webinar is titled Inflammation and Vascular Damage in Hypertension, featuring Dr. Anna Briones, Professor of Pharmacology at the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid. Today, she will present her research on the effects and potential therapeutic targets of excessive inflammation and vascular damage in hypertension. Before we get started, we would just like to acknowledge our partners at the American Physiological Society and the European Council for Cardiovascular Research, and a special shout out to our session sponsor, Kent Scientific, for helping to make this event possible. Kent Scientific provides innovative anesthesia and physiological monitoring solutions for researchers working with rodents. Designed for accuracy, precision, reproducibility, and successful outcomes, their products incorporate over 30 years of experience experience and service working with the small animal models. And with that, I'd like to invite Anna to join me. Anna, take it away whenever you're ready. Hi. Hi, Sydney. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. Uh, good morning and good afternoon again. Uh, for uh, First of all, I would like to thank the uh, uh, organizers of this cardiovascular connection series to uh, allow me to uh, show you some of the results we've been working uh, uh, and we've been uh, producing during the last uh, few years in the field of inflammation and vascular damage in hypertension. So as you probably know, hypertension is the leading cause of death and mortality worldwide, accounting for nearly half of all strokes, heart failure, myocardial infarction, kidney damage, and also cognitive dysfunction. And indeed, the last uh, global burden of disease uh, report in 2019 uh, uh, reported that hypertension was responsible for 11 million or almost 20% of all attributable deaths in this year. Importantly is the fact that uh, there are effective pharmacological treatments, but uh, if, despite these this, uh, treatments, blood pressure control role, uh, rates are still quite poor. And the reasons might be different, including social reasons, uh, the health uh, status of the country, uh, pharmacological reasons, etc. And also it has been suggested that there might be additional unknown underlying biological mechanisms responsible for hypertensive disease. In this sense, uh, during the last uh, few decades, uh, many uh, clinical and also many preclinical studies have demonstrated that different risk factors, including viral infections, high salt diet, genetics, microbiome, and some others, could produce a low-grade inflammatory state, not only in the vasculature, but also in, in organs important for blood pressure regulation, including the kidney, the heart, and the brain, which would be characterized by immune cells infiltrated in these tissues, particularly in blood vessels, and also in the surrounding perivascular adipose tissue, which would produce an increase in the expression of inflammatory uh, molecule, uh, molecules, including chemokines, uh, cytokines, reactive oxygen species, and augmented expression of inflammatory, inflammatory cytokine enzymes. So this inflammatory milieu would uh, affect the main uh, features of vascular damage and hypertension, including endothelial dysfunction, dysfunction, which is defined not only by an impaired endothelium-dependent vasodilation, but also by an excessive vasoconstriction and also endothelial activation that allows binding of immune cells. Also, uh, uh, inflammation or low-grade inflammation in hypertension might uh, affect vascular remodeling by uh, changing the phenotype of vascular smooth muscle cells from a contractile towards a more uh, synthetic uh, phenotype, which produces more extracellular matrix inducing fibrosis and consequently increased vascular stiffness. In this sense, during the last uh, few years, we have uh, performed bioinformatic studies where we analyzed the uh, proteins or we investigated proteins involved in hypertension and we retrieved uh, we found that more than 2200 proteins were involved in hypertension, in hypertension disease. 
If we apply it by informatics tools, in this case, the upstream regulator analysis tool from the Ingenuity pathway analysis, analysis software, we found that interestingly, among the top five uh, molecules upstream regulators that were involved uh, or responsible in theory for hypertension, three of them were cytokines, TNF alpha, interleukin 1 beta, and interferon gamma. And also, uh, in the ten, uh, in the top fifteen molecules, there were still some transcription factors or the cytokines, which are also important modulating hypertension. And indeed, many of these uh, um, um, these three molecules, uh, the uh, TNF alpha, interleukin one beta, and, TN and interferon gamma, are related from more or less a hundred of thousand. Uh, uh, sorry, more or less with a thousand of proteins involved in hypertension. So we were particularly involved in interferon gamma that we found that in this uh, database was connected with 932 uh, proteins and we wanted to investigate further some downstream mediators of this interferon gamma uh, molecule. With further uh, bioinformatic analysis, uh, we came out with the discovery of a new, in, uh, of a new in, uh, gene uh, the, derived from uh, interferon gamma, interferon gamma stimulated gene 15 or ISD15, that we found that in theory was related with more or less 60 proteins of this hypertension data set. And interestingly, this uh, ISD15 was related with uh, uh, proteins involved in endothelial dysfunction, in vascular remodeling, or in both. What that suggested us that ISD15 could be therefore a theoretical and uh, novel mediator involved in hypertension in vascular and vascular damage. So we wanted to test uh, this uh, hypothesis and um, um, first we took peripheral blood mononuclear cells, which are the cells that usually synthesize and release ISC15 from a, thought of, from a population of 175 patients with different risk factors for cardiovascular disease, obesity, hypertension, or diabetes or hypercholesterolemia. But these patients never had any cardiovascular event. And what we found is that when we measure IgG15 mRNA in these peripheral blood mononuclear cells from these patients, we found a positive and significant correlation with systolic blood pressure here in the, in the panel on the left, but also with carotid intima media thickness, which, as you probably know, is a surrogate marker for vascular remodeling. And more importantly, these correlations remained uh, significant after adjusting for traditional cardiovascular risk factors such as age, gender, smoking, body mass index, blood pressure, glucose or cholesterol. We wanted to get further insights in the, re the role of ISD15 in vascular damage and hypertension, and we used the classical model of hypertension produced by angiotensin II infusion for 14 days in uh, uh, supercutaneous osmotic mini pumps. And we used uh, Walter mice and ISD15 knockout mice. So as you can see in this panel, angiotensin II, as expected, increased systolic blood pressure in uh, wild-type mice, and this was partially prevented in ISD15 knockout mice. Similarly, angiotensin II increased, uh, I mean, sorry, decreased uh, acetylcholine-induced relaxation, which is a marker of endothelial function in uh, arteries from wild-type mice, and this was also prevented here in orange uh, in arteries from ISD15 knockout mice. We looked at vascular stiffness by analyzing the stress-strain relationship in pressurized mesenteric arteries, and we found that angiotensin II increased vascular stiffness, as shown by the left leftward shift of this stress relationship and the increase in the young elastic modulus, and again, that was prevented by uh, uh, ISD15 deletion, that were prevent, uh, protected against the deleterious effects of angiotensin II. So these results, with some other results that I'm not going to show you today, uh, allow us, uh, allowed us to propose this working model where angiotensin II, through the production of interferon gamma, would increase the expression of ISD15 in vascular cells and also in macrophages, and this ISD15 would bind to proteins synthesized de novo 
inducing a postrelational modification term isgelation, which eventually would change the function and also maybe the expression of different proteins involved in vascular damage, including oxidative stress and some proteins involved in vascular remodeling. And indeed, we found that this isgelation pro uh, uh, process is uh, involved in abdominal aortic aneurysms. ISD15 could also be released outside the cells as a free cytokine and acting in different uh, cell types could uh, produce an increase in the expression of different inflammatory uh, proteins such as interferon, cyclooxygenase 2 or NADPH oxidases would, that could be responsible for the endothelial dysfunction and eventually for the vascular stiffness that might contribute to hypertension. So at, up to this point, uh, our group and many other groups were working on the hypothesis that uh, an excessive inflammation would be affecting or would be uh, inducing endothelial dysfunction, changes in contractility, changes in vascular muscle cell phenotype, and extracellular matrix deposition would, that would contribute to vascular remodeling and stiffness. And of course, it would uh, be associated with immune cells dysregulation and phenotype switch. And these uh, alterations associated to hypertension could contribute to vascular damage in other uh, cardiovascular pathologies currently or, or normally or very frequently associated with hypertension in the clinic, in the clinic, uh, at the clinics, including obesity, abdominal aortic aneurysms, uh, heart failure, or kidney disease. But we also questioned whether this increased inflammatory uh, situation or, or this increased inflammatory milieu could be uh, um, uh, due to the de decreased or a deficient resolution of inflammation that would modulate this uh, inflammatory uh, state. So therefore, if this is the case, if our hypothesis is correct, Promoting resolution of inflammation, boosting this resolution of inflammation might protect the cardiovascular system and the immune system and therefore might have a beneficial effect in these cardiovascular pathologies with a big advantage of not compromising immune physiological response. But what is resolution of inflammation? So you probably know that in an acute inflammatory state, there is an increase in blood flow and microvascular permeability that produce tissue edema. And this is uh, produced by the actions and the effects of different pro-inflammatory mediators, including leukotrienes or prostaglandin E2. These mediators also attract peripheral blood, uh, sorry, uh, polymorphonuclear uh, neutrophils that infiltrate these tissues and engulf and degrade pathogens, becoming eventually in apoptotic polymorphonuclear cells. These apoptotic polymorphonuclear cells uh, stop releasing or uh, stop, stop decreasing the release of inflammatory mediators and start the release of uh, resolving mediators, uh, term uh, specialized pro resolving me mediators or SPMs, that might have uh, uh, increased uh, the, uh, the uh, a process term uh, ferrocytosis produced by uh, macrophages to uh, destroy these apoptotic uh, peripheral uh, polymorphonuclear cells and restore tissue amyostasis. These SPMs not only uh, favor this ferrocytosis to, de to destroy these cells, but also change the phenotype of macrophages from a pro-inflammatory uh, phenotype to a pro-resolving uh, phenotype, which is very important for tissue repair and regeneration. So any fail uh, or any problem in this uh, resolution uh, could eventually produce chronic injury, of course, inflammation and fibrosis. So in this uh, uh, process of resolution of inflammation, which is that that initially was thought a very passive uh, uh, process, there is uh, something called a, a lipid mediator class switching that uh, occurs mainly in, in, in neutrophils, at least at the beginning of the, uh, of the resolution process, whereby inflammatory molecules such as prostaglandin E2 activate the transcriptional, uh, the, uh, the transcriptional activation of the enzymes, including 15 lipoxygenase, that switch the production of uh, um, arachidonic acid drive mediators from 
leukotrienes to another uh, mediator terms lipoxins. And indeed, these lipoxins were uh, the first uh, group of SPMs to be identified. Um, all of them are produced uh, in, in a temporal um, uh, time period of minutes uh, since the acute inflammation, and they are uh, being produced, as I mentioned earlier, at the moment where the peripheral mononuclear cells start, start to decrease, uh, sorry, the, peri the the neutrophils start to decrease and the macrophages start to be uh, recruited. And we have not only lipoxins, which uh, is the main, uh, the first uh, family of mediators uh, described uh, in this uh, science, but now we know that there are other four big families of SPMs term resolvins from D and E series, protectins and maresins. And indeed, this has become much more complicated over the last uh, few years, because now we know that there are a huge number of these SPMs, being all of them as uh, lipid, uh, uh, as uh, inflammatory mediators such as prostanoids derived from polyunsaturated fatty acids. As I mentioned, the first family of mediators were uh, lipoxins that are derived from omega-6 uh, fatty, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, arachidonic acids. But we know now that omega-3 fatty acids such as EPA, uh, eicosapentanoic acid, docosahexanoic acid, DHA, or docosapentanoic acid, DPA, are also to uh, be, um, are also precursors of uh, different uh, mediators or um, SPMs by the action of different enzymatic uh, pathways. And this includes resolvins E from EPA, resolvins D from DHA, protectins or PDs, maresins uh, uh, down here, or resolvins derived from omega-3 DPA. There are all, also other families, including resolving conjugates in tissue re re regenerations, uh, uh, also um, maresins conjugates in tissue regeneration, and uh, resolvins 13. So highlighting that uh, uh, the, the huge complexity of this uh, uh, family of pro-resolving uh, mediators. An interesting aspect is that most of these uh, mediators, or at least the best characterized SPMs, bind to G-protein coupled receptors, which are expressed in different cell types, with some, lipo uh, with some uh, SPMs uh, being selective for specific mediators, or some being able to bind to several or, of these GPCR. Also, there are some uh, GPCR that can bind to different receptors. So what are the effects of these SPMs or pro-resolving lipid mediators? So as you can uh, already uh, imagine, uh, most of these effects have been uh, best described in the immune cells, in, in neutrophils, macrophages, in lymphocytes, and also in platelets. And indeed, these immune cells express a huge um, um, express many of these SPMs receptors, which are there, uh, therefore able to, sign, uh, to signal uh, the effects of different SPMs. For example, in, in neutrophils, different SPMs acting on their respective uh, receptors are uh, able to decrease infiltration, decrease chemotaxis, and increase uh, phagocytosis. In microphages, as I mentioned earlier, uh, SPMs increases M2 polarization and etherocytosis, also phagocytosis, decreased inflammatory cytokines, and decreased infiltration. In lymphocytes, uh, they are a bit less studied, but they seem to be, have uh, lower uh, inflammatory abilities and activation, and also decreased production of cytokine. And at platelets, they seem to um, produce decreased aggregation, activation, and clot remodeling. But what we found very interesting is that several of these SPN receptors are also expressed in, in, vascu in vascular cells, in endothelial cells, and vascular smooth muscle cells. And although this has been a little bit less studied compared to effect of SPMs in immune cells, there are reports suggesting that uh, activation of uh, these receptors might produce the, uh, a decrease in the production of inflammatory cytokines, decreased activation of uh, endothelial cells that would prevent addition and migration of immune cells to these endothelial cells.
And the vascular smooth muscle cells, SPM, might decrease proliferation, migration, and activation, which indeed might have uh, um, pathological uh, consequences. So, because these uh, um, SPMs, as I mentioned earlier, are acting uh, in immune cells, macrophages, uh, and uh, neutrophils, and also in T lymphocytes, which are important in many cardiovascular diseases, as you probably know, and they are also acting in, in vascular smooth muscle cells and in endothelial cells. During the last few uh, years, uh, there are a number of very elegant uh, studies demonstrating that these SPMs might be protective uh, therapeutic uh, tools for the treatment of atherosclerosis, abdominal aortic aneurysms, and vascular hyperplasia. But less uh, was known or less, uh, or there was, there was less information about what would be the, the, the role of these SPMs in hypertensive disease. So first thing we did is we questioned whether there might be a decrease in, in, in these SPMs produ production or there might be a disbalance in the production of these um, uh, um, resolving mediators. So again, we used the angiotensin II infused model and we took hearts uh, from these uh, mice infused with angiotensin II, and in collaboration with Jess Mondali from the uh, William Harvey Research Institute in London, we uh, measured, or he measured by HPLC and mass spectrometry, the metabolomes of uh, uh, SPMs derived from uh, arachidonic acid DPA, DHA, and uh, omega-3 DPA. And as you can see here, uh, 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 there were a clear difference in the profile of different of, uh, of SPMs in the hearts of control mice when compared to the angiotensin II infused mice in blue. And actually, uh, he was able to identify in this heart several mediators that were responsible of this uh, separation in the profile of SPMs with some being increased and some other being decreased by angiotensin II. We then questioned, or, or, or we then uh, thought that, that maybe if we increase the uh, amount of these SPMs in, in, at the cardiovascular level, we may protect uh, these, uh, the, the mice from the effects of angiotensin II. And for that, we took uh, uh, these uh, FAT1 mice, uh, which uh, express a humanized FAT gene that encodes for this omega-3 desaturase that transforms omega-6 fatty acids into omega-3. When we fed these mice with an omega-6 rich uh, diet, uh, uh, these mice are able to, uh, these mice have or show elevated levels of uh, SPMs in different tissues. And these mice uh, were provided by Jim Khan from Harvard Medical School. So again, we infused these mice with angiotensin II for two weeks, as described earlier. And what we found is that, uh, um, uh, again, as suspected, angiotensin II increased blood pressure in water mice, and this was partially prevented in these fat one mice. Also, we found that endothelial dysfunction induced by angiotensin II in aorta and in small arteries in mesenteric resistance arteries was partially prevented in FAT1 mice, which are shown in green. And we also uh, found that uh, angiotensin II, which increased vascular contractility in aorta in arteries from Walter mice, was partially prevented also by FAT1 uh, gene expression suggesting that angiotensin II might protect uh, uh, from the functional alterations induced by hypertension or angiotensin II. So we also looked at vascular remodeling, and as you can see here, angiotensin II decreased the size of, uh, of the small arteries. And again, this was partially prevented by angiotensin II. And we also showed some protection of uh, FAT1 mice uh, uh, in vascular stiffness, as demonstrated here by the similar stress strain relationship in response to angiotensin II in FAT1 mice that was not observed in wild type mice. This protection in vascular stiffness was probably due, among some uh, other uh, reasons, because we observed that the Changes in the uh, internal elastic uh, lamina induced by angiotensin II, which is uh, a decrease in the finistra area, were not observed in arteries from FAT1 mice. 
So these mice were then partially protected from hypertension and vascular damage, but we next question whether they might also be protected against angiotensin to induced vascular inflammation. We perform a cytokine array, as you can see here in the aorta of these mice, and as expected, we found in the second line of this heat map that angiotensin 2 increased the expression of many of these cytokines or chemokines. But interestingly, fat arteries from fat one mice already have some lower uh, uh, um, expression of some of these inflammatory uh, cytokines, which would which was much more evident in the presence of angiotensin II, where you can appreciate a decrease in the expression of many of these pro-inflammatory cytokines. So next question, so what happens if, if we inject or if, if we give uh, uh, one specific SPM to these mice with hypertension, would they be protected as they were when we increased the levels of many SPMs. So we did another experimental model with resolving D2 that was, that was uh, given uh, by IP injection one day before the implantation of angiotensin II mini pumps. So this is a prevention model. So what we found here is that uh, angiotensin II again increased uh, blood pressure uh, as expected, and this was clearly uh, partially prevented by pre-resolving D2 administration, preventive resolving D2 administration. We also found that uh, angiotensin II induced cardiac dysfunction, increased uh, cardiomyocyte size, and increased cardiac fibrosis, and this was significantly prevented by resolving D2. So we also uh, uh, detected uh, changes in the level of, of SPMs in the heart of, of these mice, where you, can see, uh, where you can see clearly a shift in the production of the different SPMs when compared to angiotensin II mice, with again some of the SPMs increased by, by uh, resolving D2 and some SPMs being decreased. At the vascular level, uh, 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 both in the small mesentery arteries and, and in aorta, resolving D2 also produced protective effect since it improved endothelium dependent relaxation, as shown in the left panel, and decreased the excessive vasoconstriction induced by endotensin 2. And we also found, va found vascular protection in terms of vascular remodeling since resolving D2 decreased the increased media thickness induced by angiotensin II, both in the aorta in the upper panel and also in the small mesenteric arteries in the lower panel. So next, we question how could be uh, the uh, immune cell infiltration in this um, these vessels of this uh, treat of these mice and also as we expected we found that we when we measured the gene expression of uh, markers of uh, t lymphocytes cd3 macrophages ranx1 or additional molecules such as icam1 and your tensin to increase the expression of these mediators that was significantly and completely prevented by resolving d2 if we looked at specific immune cells infiltrated in, in these uh, vessels um, and also uh, uh, surrounded by perivascular adipose tissue, which is the main site of adipose uh, immune cells infiltration, we found that uh, uh, angiotensin II increased the infiltration of neutrophils, as you can see here, macrophages, and decreased the levels of M2 uh, macrophages uh, positive for CD163. Interestingly, uh, resolving D2 did not uh, change the levels of um, um, neutrophils and increased the levels of macrophages, probably due to a significant increase in M2 macrophages. We wanted to characterize further how were these macrophages treated with angiotensin II and uh, resolving D2, and we perform electrophysiological studies of peritoneal macrophages uh, because um, activated macrophages show a specific uh, KV uh, potassium uh, uh, current uh, when activated. So um, they are able to have, they, they, they have an increase in this uh, KV current. 
As you can see in the upper panel, and you tend to two activators may, may be uh, considered like activated microphages since they have a significant increase in the KV uh, current, and this was completely prevented by resolving D2. These electrophysiological features were also corroborated by measuring, M, uh, by measuring uh, M1 and M2 uh, cytokines. And we observed that angiotensin 2 increased the expression, the gene expression of some M1 cytokines, including K, uh, ILV, one, um, interleukin 1 beta, IL6, or cyclooxygenase 2, and also the expression of uh, potassium channels, KV 1.3, responsible for the increase in this KV current, and this was prevented by resolving D2 administration. Interestingly, we also found that uh, although we did not uh, found uh, many differences with angiotensin 2 in, in M2 markers, a part of M oxygenase 2 that was decreased, we found that um, resolving D2 clearly increased the expression of M2 markers, suggesting that this uh, resolving D2 might be acting both in vascular cells and also in immune cells, particularly in macrophages, by changing their phenotype. So then resolving D2 was able to prevent the cardiovascular damage associated to hypertension. But next question, and maybe most important, is was, was that is resolving D2 also able to regress the vascular damage associated to hypertension? Can resolving D2 decrease blood pressure when it's already established? And can it Pro, uh, regress the cardiovascular damage that is already present. So then we give we gave uh, um, resolving D2 at day seven or after angiotensin two infusion, where in mice have already maximal blood pressure and have already established cardiovascular damage. And what we found here is that resolving D2 was not able to decrease the uh, um, increase in blood pressure induced by angiotensin two. But it was able to protect the, the, or to regress the deleterious effects of angiotensin II in the heart. So uh, resolving D2 improved cardiac function, decreased uh, cardiomyocyte size, and also decreased fibrosis. Also, uh, uh, resolving D2 was able to regress the angiotensin II induced endothelial dysfunction, as shown here in the improvement in the acetylcholine induced relaxation in the small arteries, although this was not observed in aorta, I have to say, and also prevented the hypertrophy of large and small arteries, not, not prevented, regressed the hypertrophy of large arteries, aorta, and small mesenteric arteries that was produced by angiotensin II. When we looked at the expression of uh, inflammatory immune cells uh, markers, uh, we, were, uh, we observed that uh, um, therapeutic resolving D2 did not modify the levels of uh, 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 CD3 and RANEX uh, macrophages marker, lymphocytes and macrophages marker, although it decreased the expression of uh, um, additional molecules, ICAM-1. And new, and new results that we obtained very recently showed that when we looked at flow cytometry in the aorta and prevascular adipose tissue, this uh, regression uh, administration of resolving D2 was able to decrease the number of neutrophils, but with not affecting the number of macrophages. So similarly to what we found with the preventive uh, resolving D2 administration, uh, when we gave uh, resolving D2 at uh, day seven after angiotensin II administration, uh, uh, this SPM was able to normalize the altered electrophysiological properties indicating uh, decreased activation of peritoneal macrophages and also decreased the expression of M1 macrophages, KV 1.3 channels, uh, interleukin 1 beta, IL6, and COX2. And even we observed, uh, uh, we, we did not observe uh, significant changes in M2 markers. So uh, this uh, resolving D2 was able to prevent uh, or um, uh, 
was able to uh, regress cardiovascular alterations associated to hypertension, and it seems to be in the process of uh, changing macrophages phenotype towards a more uh, protective uh, phenotype. So in summary, the second part of, of this presentation, uh, uh, we, uh, protect, uh, we pro propose this uh, working model. We're resolving the two acting on GPR18, which is the cogn it's, uh, cognitive receptor, and expressed in cardiomyocytes, uh, uh, endothelial cells, vascular smooth muscle cells, and also in macrophages, would prevent from the uh, deleterious effects of angiotensin 2 in the heart and in the tissues. So and you ten, uh, uh, resolving the two uh, would decrease the hypertrophy, fibrosis, excessive immune cells infiltration, and would change the levels of SPMs, also providing a decrease in, in fibrosis, infiltration, and better uh, uh, vasoactive production, nitric oxide and prostacycline, that together would produce uh, um, a normalization of, of cardiac uh, remodeling and dysfunction and vascular remodeling and function that would prevent uh, for the development of high blood pressure. So next question was if, Resolving D2 seems to be protecting the cardiovascular system in hypertension. What happens in we if we give resolving D2 to a to a clinical to a condition where hypertension coexists with obesity, which is very commonly observed in the clinical uh, in, the, in the clinics. So we then developed another model um, of uh, vascular damage where we took C57 black six mile, uh, male uh, mice that were four weeks of age and we fed them with high fat diet for 18 weeks. We, being these mice uh, uh, being implanted with angiotensin to mini pumps during the last four weeks of high fat diet feeding. One day before the implantation of uh, the angiotensin II mini pumps, these mice were also injected uh, with resolving D2 for the following four weeks. We used as control mice, uh, 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 mice fed with normal diet. And we measure uh, weekly uh, the weight and also blood pressure after angiotensin II implant uh, infusion and also the diameter of the aorta. So what we found is, uh, is that, of course, angiotensin II increased uh, blood pressure in, in obese mice, and that was partially protected uh, uh, by resolving D2, particularly at the end of the treatment. Also, very importantly, these obese hypertensive mice developed abdominal aortic aneurysms in, in a very uh, high percentage of mice, which was already described by previous authors, and that was prevented by resolving D2. And when we looked at the uh, aorta size with magnetic resonance imaging, uh, particularly in the abdominal region, we found that uh, angiotensin II here uh, in, in gray bars increased the maximal external diameter and also the maximal uh, wall thickness from day seven of angiotensin II administration. And that was uh, completely uh, prevented by resolving D2 administration, which are the bars shown in orange. This, uh, uh, the, this uh, aortic dilation was also um, confirmed by histological uh, stainings. And as you can see here, um, um, uh, the abdominal aorta from high fat diet uh, uh, fed and you tend to infused mice showed greater uh, thickness, uh, augmented thickness that was due to uh, uh, an increase in the adventitia thickness with no significant changes in media thickness. And that was uh, also prevented by resolving D2. This abdominal aortic aneurysm segment showed uh, an important decrease in the density of vascular smooth muscle cells due to apoptosis, and that was prevented by resolving D2 administration. And importantly, these alterations have functional consequences because when we measured the contraction of these uh, abdominal aortic aneurysms, we found a clear uh, hypotensive uh, hypocontractility in this uh, um, uh, 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 aneurysm segment, 
and also an uh, uh, defective vasodilation endothelial dysfunction that again was pre uh, prevented by resolving D2. In terms of inflammation, we uh, in this case, we isolated uh, the perivascular adipose tissue and the aorta. And if you uh, look at the upper panels, you will see that uh, hypertensive obese mice have increased expression of different uh, markers of inflammation, such as IL-6, MCP-1 or CCL-2, TNF-alpha, lipocaline, uh, um, and again, IL-6 in both PIVAT and aorta. And some of these uh, markers, not all, particularly IL-6, was decreased by, uh, by resolving D2. When we looked at the infiltration of immune cells in the lower panel of the slide, you uh, can see that, as expected also, angiotensin 2 plus high fat diet produced an increase in the, in the expression of uh, the uh, gene of the marker of, um, of the gene expression of the marker for macrophages, AADR gene 1, monocytes CD14, and T lymphocytes in the aorta, although not in, in the pervascular adipose tissue. And what was interesting is that uh, resolving D2 was able to decrease the uh, infiltration of monocytes and increased the presence of T regulatory cells, T regulatory lymphocytes that, as you know, are protective uh, lymphocytes. And that was observed uh, in perivascular adipose tissue. So next and finally, uh, we wanted to know whether this might have a translational uh, uh, consequence. And then we took uh, an aorta from patients which were obese and hypertensive from um, uh, patients with abdominal aortic aneurysms and patients with had aortic pathology. They, were, they had already some degree of aortic pathology, but did not have uh, abdomen uh, uh, aneurysms did not have that aortic dilation, which would ask to uh, identify possible differences due uh, specifically to the presence of the aneurysms. As you can see, see uh, as you can see here, we found increased expression of GPR18, which I, uh, is receptor for uh, resolving D2, as you may remember, and also an increased expression of uh, 15 lipoxygenase, which is uh, the enzyme involved in um, uh, SPM synthesis, in, in the synthesis of many SPMs. And we did not find differences in the expression of other, of other um, SPMs receptors, such as GPR32, uh, GPR, uh, ChemR23, or in the expression of 5-lipoxygenase. Interestingly, uh, we were able to look at the correlation of um, uh, the expression of 15 uh, lipoxygenase uh, with uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm growth rate, although this was done in a very small uh, group of patients. And we found that, as you can see here, there was an inverse correlation between the expression of 15 logs and growth uh, rate, suggesting that the lower uh, the expression of 15 logs, the higher uh, the growth rate which is uh, of the aneurysm, which is a prognost uh, prognostic um, um, uh, marker for uh, aortic rupture. So these uh, this, uh, um, results uh, and some others that I did not show here allowed uh, uh, us to describe that in human abdominal aortic aneurysm patients, there is an increase in infiltration of immune cells also an increase in the expression of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines that might be uh, counterbalanced uh, by increased expression of uh, enzymes and receptors involved in synthesis and actions of uh, resolving D2. Importantly, there, are, there is a, a, an inverse correlation between the expression of 15 logs and the aneurysm growth, which may uh, uh, suggest that a defective S, uh, resolution of inflammation might contribute to uh, uh, aortic aneurysm rupture. And that was also uh, confirmed in an animal model where uh, when we um, provide or inject a resolving D2 in, in this model with obesity and, and, and utensin 2, we were able to observe uh, protection in terms of less blood pressure elevation, and better aortic size, less uh, abdominal aortic aneurysms, inflammation, 
less adventitious signal, protection against vascular smooth muscle sores, uh, loss, sorry, and better vascular function. So all together, the results that I show uh, I showed you today uh, uh, allow us to suggest that pro-resolving lipid mediators might be a novel therapeutic strategy for the management of cardiovascular damage in hypertension or in some comorbidities associated with hypertension. So finally, I would like to thank uh, mainly my group at the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, uh, particularly Raquel Rodríguez, uh, Rodríguez, Lucía Serrano, Ana García Redondo, and María González Amor, who perform all these uh, all the experiments that I showed you today, but also our collaborators at the King Mary University of London, uh, Span some other Spanish universities. Hospital, uh, two hospitals in Spain who provided the, the human samples and our collaborators at the uh, uh, Institute for Biomedical Research, uh, Complutense University and the National Center for Cardiovascular Disease. And of course, I thank you to our funding uh, entities and I also thank you for your attention. Thank you, Anna. That was such an interesting presentation. Let's jump into the Q&A. Our first question here, this was submitted earlier on in your presentation. Um, they asked, what method was used to measure blood pressure? We used a tail calf plethysmography, which uh, we know is not the standard method for blood pressure measurements, but uh, we don't have access to telemetry, which would be an ideal. So that was a tail calf. Perfect. I think that is... That is very commonly used. Um, telemetry requires surgery, so um, tail cuff, yeah. I know, is a little bit easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we don't have for that. Hmm. Perfect. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, our next question, they said, great presentation. Um, if RVD2 did not decrease blood pressure, but it improved vascular relaxation, endothelium dependent, what about vascular contraction? Um, my guess is that RVD2 did not improve vascular contraction. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Camila. Yes, uh, this is true. Uh, uh, the uh, therapeutic resolving D2 administration produced some effects, but not all the effects as compared to the uh, preventive uh, uh, administration. And also we found some differences in terms of aorta and small mesenteric artery. So in this case, uh, um, it did not prevent hypercontractility. That is, uh, that is true. We don't know exactly why uh, this is like that. Uh, um, of course, not the vasodilator or vasoconstrictor factors involved in contraction uh, uh, and relaxation in aorta and in um, small arteries might be a bit uh, different. And also, um, our feeling is that maybe uh, we are a bit tight uh, in the time that we gave a, a resolving the two once hypertension was established. So maybe um, we would need to increase a bit uh, more the uh, administration of resolving two once the hypertension is already uh, uh, established and the vascular damage is there and we may see uh, more effects but in this case uh, you are right no no uh, best contraction no better contraction thank you perfect great response that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. um our next one here asks have you ever thought to use the LDLR knockout mouse fed with a high fat diet to see the rescue effect of RVD2 in atherosclerosis. Yeah, hi Nicolo. We haven't uh, uh, we haven't done experiments in a model of atherosclerosis, but there are um, other investigators who have done uh, that uh, using a number of different approaches. They have uh, given. Uh, um, resolving D2 or some other resolvings in, in these models of atherosclerosis, or they have also used uh, knockout mice or, or knocking mice for different uh, uh, SPM receptors. And also uh, this uh, model of LDL uh, uh, receptor knockout or APOE knockout mice, uh, when infused with angiotensin 2, they are a very commonly used model of uh, abdominal aortic aneurysms. And in this case, uh, there are also several reports suggesting that some resolvings, such as resolving D2, 
might prevent the uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm formation in this specific model. Um, we are now focusing on hypertension, but um, there are evidence suggesting that they are also protective in atherosclerosis. Yeah, clearly. Great. Okay. Um, Dieter asked, uh, did you assess, for example, aortic diameter in vivo or link pressure, pressure measurements to vascular stif stiffness assessed with imaging? No, no, we haven't done. We just did uh, vascular stiffness measurements in um, in the small arteries with a pressure myograph, but we were we haven't been able to do uh, yet the 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 measurements of uh, vascular stiffness in vivo. That's uh, something that we will uh, we would like to do clearly, but uh, we haven't been able to do it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, maybe a future option. <laughs> I, I hope um, so. Yeah, we need special yeah. equipment for that. So we we don't yeah. we don't have that. Uh, hmm. I'm sure that's something a, a lot of researchers can relate to. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, Jennifer said very interesting work. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, do females have higher pro resolve in lipid mediators? Yeah, very interesting question. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think uh, I can't say, but that is really very important and very interesting. Thank you for highlighting. Most of I, I, most of the studies done, at least in the vascular uh, um, with the with SPMs in the uh, in cardiovascular diseases, have been done in males. So mm -hmm. I don't know if maybe in in terms of. Um, uh, works done for look at the effect of SPMs in infections. There might be uh, um, some studies, but at the least in, in in cardiovascular, they have been done in, in in males. But definitely, that would be very important to look at. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I've heard that a lot. Um, that mostly male male mice, male rats mm. are studied. So that's something I think that's becoming bigger um, nowadays, at least yeah. in studies incorporating more female models mm. yeah it's true mm. okay our next question here is um could you comment on the minimum time for vascular remodeling to happen from acute injury does it vary from vasculature to vasculature yeah that depends on the type of vascular injury so um in hypertension what i can tell you is that uh angiotensin to infusion remodels the artery in seven days we haven't done um a study before seven days there are other uh, um, methods or other models of vascular injury for example a wire injury or ballon induced injury which are um, more aggressive uh, than uh, angiotensin to infusion in terms of, in terms of producing vascular remodeling. I am not. I don't remember exactly how much does it take, but um, I think it's, it's it's probably quite uh, short. Also, a few days probably. But uh, it's more the type of remodeling that every uh, injury also does with some being more associated with vascular smooth muscle cell proliferation, for example, like the wire injury or the ballon induced injury, and angiotensin to induce hypertension is kind of different. No so much changes in vascular smooth muscle cell number. Okay, great response, thank you. Let's thank jump you. into this next question. Did you find any changes in the heart during the model of hypertension? Yeah, we we uh, we found uh, um, protection uh, uh, of cardiac dysfunction and also uh, um, hypertrophy and fibrosis and also apoptosis. Although I did not show this data uh, here, uh, both in the prevention model and also in the regression model. So the heart seems to be really sensitive uh, to the uh, beneficial effects of resolving D two. Yeah. Perfect. And also, it changes the level of SPMs, as you, uh, as you so indicating that uh, resolving D two really is acting uh, quite a lot in the in the heart. Hmm. Right. Okay. Um, 
All right, I think we have time for two more questions. So um, Meredith asked, in your mouse models of hypertension, is there any evidence that the vascular remodeling slash stiffness can be reversed? Or is this permanent damage? I don't know if the question regards to uh, the effects of resolving D2 or in general. Uh, um, in our case, uh, the resolving D2 uh, regressed the vascular remodeling, but uh, did not um, regress the vascular stiffness. So um, that was what we found. Um, there are other therapies that clearly reverse uh, vascular uh, remodeling and stiffness in, in hypertension. But in our specific model, it reversed at least uh, during these seven days of, of resolving D2 administration, um, reversed the remodeling, but not yet, maybe, the, the augmented stiffness. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's squeeze in our last question here. Um, Mark asked you, did RVD2 treatment attenuate aortic AT1R or increase ACE2? We haven't measured. Mm, we don't know. No, we haven't measured any, um, any effects of uh, resolving D2 in uh, an AT. 81 or 2 or, or 8 um, enzymes. No, that's uh, we haven't done. We, we maybe should do it. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Okay. No problem. <laughs> um, Thanks. Okay. We've, yeah, we've reached the end of our um, uh, end of our session here. So the, the hour flew by. Thank you so much for being here with us. It was a fantastic presentation and it's been a pleasure to have you with us. And I hope you had fun. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to all of you and also uh, to the for the questions that, that they were very interesting. Thank you. Great, thanks. Okay, and I just want to say a very big thank you to our audience for joining us live. In closing, we hope you enjoyed this Inside Scientific webinar sponsored by Kent Scientific and produced in partnership with the American Physiological Society and the European Council for Cardiovascular Research. And we look forward to having you with us for the rest of this series.